All right, everybody, let's start talking broadheads. It is that time of year where we gotta start shooting our broadheads, make sure we're ready to go for the hunting season. So this is gonna be part one of a multi-part video series where we are gonna test a few different types of broadheads out of those Cirrus Phoenix arrows that I built up and did a video on not too long ago. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over one of these broadheads and we're gonna shoot one of these broadheads and see how it does. So stay tuned. All right, guys, real quick, before we dive into one of the broadheads, I want to give a shout out to Lusk Archery and John Lusk. In my opinion, he does the best broadhead testing out there. He's got a great channel. He tests everything apples to apples. So he's not necessarily shooting a whole bunch of animals with these heads and giving you guys reviews because you really can't test one head compared to another apples to apples shooting animals because every animal is built a little bit different. You're always going to hit a little bit different spots. You're never going to have really good, consistent uh, test setup or a test method. And, and that's what John has established. So I love his channel. And that's why we've got some of the heads that we have here today. Not only do they fly well, but they also perform very well in his test. So thank you, John. All right, broadhead number one is the Tooth of the Arrow XL 150 grain. This is a non-vented head machined out of all steel. So first, before we shoot it, we're gonna go through just some specs and details on this particular head. And then we're gonna shoot those same three serious arrows at 60 yards, just like we did for the field point test. Let's talk specs real quick on the Tooth of the Arrow heads. Uh, not only the ones that I got, but some of the other heads that they offer. So I'm here on the website. The heads that I got were the 150 grain and in the one and three sixteenths cutting diameter, and I got the solids here. But as you can see, in the one and three sixteenths, you've got the option of a solid head or a vented head. And then they also, if we come back up here real quick, they got the exact same options, but in a one inch cutting diameter version. Again, solid and vented. On the one and three sixteenths inch cutting diameter heads, you've got weight ranges from 100 grains all the way to 175 grain. So I chose the 150s. That's just what has worked for me for quite a while. And I wanted the one in 316s just because I wanted to try something with a bigger cutting diameter to just see how a bigger cutting diameter would fly out of my SWAT X1. So on these broadheads, guys, four blade fix. They're made out of 11L41 uh, steel and they're machined out of a solid piece of steel. They are hardened to a Rockwell hardness of 45, which is a little soft compared to some of the other all steel, all machined broadheads. But one of the benefits of that is they're going to be easier to sharpen. And if you guys watch, like I said, some of the Lusk Archery reviews on how these perform through John Lusk's test mediums, these actually perform really well. So being a little softer with the performance that they have is actually fantastic because it's going to be a nice blend of performance as well as sharpening for you guys. Black oxide finish, they are a 45 degree bevel angle on the blades. Um, and one thing that is really cool about these, you'll see weight location listed on not only this head, the uh, one and three sixteenths, but also on the one inch. 70% within the diameter of the arrow shaft. So what's cool about these heads is the center of mass of them is very, very close to that of a field point, whatever uh, field point weight it is that you're going to shoot. So these heads should basically keep that same center of mass and just overall your, your FOC um, is not going to change very much shooting these heads. That is a great benefit of them. So I went again with these. This is what we're going to be shooting. If you guys stick around to the end, I did get a promo code for uh, you guys to use or a promo link. So stick around so you can check that out. And just to be perfectly transparent, I did receive these heads for free from Tooth of the Arrow to basically test out and do a review on for you guys. All right, Tooth of the Arrow, shot one. Tooth of the Arrow, shot two. Tooth of the arrow, shot three. All right, before we put a piece of tape on that, just wanted to show you guys basically the hole that these things are making in my target, and it is a hefty one. All right, guys, I apologize for this, but we're gonna have to do just a two-shot group with the tooth of the arrow heads as well as the other heads that we're gonna test here because this arrow right here, it is flying absolutely crazy with broadheads. There's zero consistency to it. You guys saw it with the... Uh, tooth of the arrow broadhead there it was completely different than the other two and when I shot it again off camera 
it was completely different than the first point of impact. That's the same arrow, the same head. And I even put on a couple of the uh, uh, tough head broadheads and the Magnus Stingers, and it shot those all over the place too. Zero consistency to it. I think something is wrong either with the way I fletched it or there is some memory in the fletchings and it's interfering with my SWAT X1 barrel because this will not slide down the barrel freely like the other two. You kind of have to like push it down in there and it, it comes out of the bow safe and fine, but it's definitely rubbing in there and I think it's the fletchings and it's just causing it to fly crazy. So this one either needs a rebuild or it's going in the trash. We're gonna be doing two shot groups the rest of our testing. All right guys, here is the two shot group for the Tooth of the Arrow XL150. So we are excluding the third shot, which is right here because I figured out that this arrow is bad. And I apologize it's not a three shot group, but we've got a pretty solid two shot group with two arrows that I know are flying well. So looks like we're about, so this is a three inch circle right here that I got sharpied on there. So if we move over, it looks like we're about three inches to the right at 60 yards. Typically, I like to see my broadheads uh, pretty much good left to right and maybe just a little uh, higher low depending on if they shoot heavy and impact low or depending on if they plane a little bit and impact high. But the fact that these two shot, you know, this tight at 60 yards, if this is a broadhead that I was going to pick to hunt with, and I don't know if this is the one I'm going to pick yet or not, but I feel like I would be okay making that adjustment and going ahead and moving my scope over um, you know, three inches at 60 yards. And it could be just my particular arrow setup, um, the shaft that I'm shooting, the length, the fletching configuration. There might be something that shoots these closer to just true field point, point of impact than what I have set up. I'm just showing you guys how they shoot, you know, with the arrows that I've built. So the fact that they're consistent, that's a good sign. They're just a little bit to the right. Tell me what you think about the XL150 Tooth of the Arrow. Please let me know down in the comments below what your assessment is of this broadhead. My assessment is this is a really good head. It's a really good head for a couple of reasons. It's 100% machined out of steel. It's got great toughness as shown by John Lusk in his videos and the testing that he puts it through but it's not a super hard broadhead. So that 45 Rockwell hardness is gonna make it easy to sharpen, which when you buy heads like these that you know you can resharpen multiple, multiple times, having it be tough but easy to sharpen is a huge benefit. And trust me, I am not the best sharpener, so I greatly appreciate that. It's made in the USA. It's 50 bucks for three of them. Or I think the other, the one inch ones are only $45. That's about half the cost as some of the other competitors out there that are offering 100% machined steel broadheads. So it is a really affordable head for that price. Now, I'm not going to say it necessarily concerns me because 60 yards is a pretty long shot. But for them to both be a little bit to the right, that like three inches ish to the right, I would have liked to see that uh, a little closer to center or a consistently higher, consistently low. Um, but it could be my fletching configuration. Maybe this head likes a different fletching or a different offset. Uh, there could be some user error on my part. I was shooting off of a bog death grip just in a sitting position, just like I would be hunting, you know, in like a pop-up blind in a chair. So there could be some user error on my part, but in more realistic or, um, more common, you know, bow and crossbow hunting ranges, you know, this thing at like that 30 to 40 yards is probably going to be just fine. The arrows seem to be flying true when I was watching them fly through my scope. I didn't see anything erratic. They just walked a little bit to the right. Honestly, if I was going to pick this head and I might, I would be totally fine making a minor scope adjustment to make sure they were they were good, um, you know, at that 60 yard range. And then they would be good at anything inside of that. If I was going to go back and buy some, I personally would probably buy the one inch cutting diameter one just because I am more of a fan of penetration and flight and durability. So it's got the durability. Um, 
I would prefer something a little smaller cutting diameter just to increase penetration. And that should also in turn improve the flight with just less blade surface area out there in the wind. But you guys, this is an awesome broadhead. You should definitely check them out. And since you guys stuck around to the end of this video, I've got my email pulled up right here. And this is the link for $10 off any Tooth of the Arrow broadhead order. So I'm going to put this link down below in the description. I'm just going to show you guys that it works here. So here's my friend's code. This is valid until September 1st. So you guys got a month if you want to buy some of these to do it. But if we come and we use that link, if we just pick those exact same heads that I uh, was shooting in the demonstration here, add it to the cart, you guys are going to see that it's just automatically at checkout. It's going to shave 10 bucks off of your order right there. So instead of a $50 broadhead, you guys are getting these for $40 for three of them. And that is a steal for a 100% machine steel broadhead. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this review on the Tooth of the Arrow XL 150 grain heads. If you guys did, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. We've got more broadheads coming up with the exact same test and review. So be sure to tune in for our next video. We're going to be doing the Tough Head Evolution 150 next. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, be a sportsman, make a sportsman.